All right, let's talk about the third and final kind of chi-squared test that we want to be familiar with. Um, has different qualities, so these things allow us to kind of make different statements uh, based on the type of data we have. So let's remember the two that we already are familiar with. The first kind is the chi-squared goodness of fit test, okay? So what we know from that chi-squared goodness of fit where we had our example was one sample of regular M&Ms, okay? And so then we had claimed percentages, one categorical variable, color. And we had claimed percentages for those colors, all right? So we are seeing how good our sample fit the claimed percentages. All right, one sample, one variable. Now, then we did chi-squared test of homogeneity. So this was different in that we had more than one sample from different populations. So we had, for example, 500 regular M&Ms, 500 peanut butter M&Ms, and 500 peanut M&Ms. So three different populations. And I'm not going to state what the color ratios are, what the claimed percentages. I'm wondering, are those happening, Are the, is that color variable among those three populations happening at the same rate? So are the three different types, color distribution, the same? Whatever that color distribution is, I'm not stating that one way or the other, is it the same? Okay, so that's the difference there. Now, today, we're going to move into one last kind of chi-squared test, and it is the chi-squared test of independence. This is, once again, one sample. So we just take one collective sample. So maybe that's like uh, one big bowl of all your Halloween candy of m and m So you, in that one big bowl, huge bowl, had all the kinds, the all the regular and the peanut butter and the M&Ms, you didn't have them separated already. You don't even know how many there is of each kind. Okay, so you just have everything. So you're going to pull out, you just have one sample. You're going to pull out the M&M and you're going to sort it by two traits. You're going to sort it by two categorical variables. You're going to sort it by the type of M&M it is, regular peanut butter or peanut, and the color it is. So you're sorting it by two variables. And we want to ultimately see, are those two variables, color and type of M&M, &M, independent of each other? All right, so there's kind of an intro into what we're heading into. So let's go ahead and take a look at your notes. Here we have this stated out. Chi-squared test of independence. There is independent, there's no association, no relationship between those traits. There's one variable is not affecting the other. Um, more than one categorical variable. So testing out more than one variable, but from that one population, one sample. It's taken and more than one variable is measured from that one sample, then you are testing for independence. All right. Now, I have the same three examples as from page 14. And so we're going to talk through how these examples were chi-squared tests of homogeneity on page 14. But now they're chi-squared tests of independence. Okay, how can that happen? Okay, well, I reworded them. And I made it kind of a different um, organization of the test or of the sampling and the um, organization of the data. And that changed what we called it. Now, the bottom line is, and you'll see this on the next page, all the computing comes out the same. So truthfully, years and years and years, I was confused on homogeneity and independence. Um, and I thought, they're, I mean, they're pretty much saying, how can you tell the difference between those two? So I struggled that with that. Hopefully, this exercise will help you have a better grasp on um, what qualifies something as 
homogeneity versus what qualifies something as independence. Okay, here we go. So our first example we saw on page 14, if you remember, had the senior, middle-aged, and young adults, and then their milk consumption. Okay, so on page 14, here's the way it was designed. You had three separate samples. We took a random sample of 100 senior adults, a random sample of 100 middle-aged adults, and a simple random sample of 100 young adults. And then we sorted in each of those populations, we put them into drinking milk or not drinking milk. But this is organized differently. Populations. One sample of 300 adults is taken from Parker County. One sample. And then I'm going to sort that one sample on two categories. I'm going to look at that person. What age category are you in? And what, and do you drink milk or not? Boom. So for this independence one, it's one sample. So, so you know what happens? I don't really know if I'm going to get 100 seniors and 100 middle-aged and 100 young. I don't, I didn't control that. Okay, so I don't actually know how many is going to end up in my sample of each. So that's worth thinking about. You'll have different kinds of uh, numbers in those categories. All right, so ultimately then we're wondering, is milk consumption independent of age category? All right, not do every age category consume milk at the same rate? Okay. Hear how that question would be different. All right, next. Here's that idea of that one mixed up bowl of M&Ms. See, one mixed up bowl of M&Ms from your Halloween candy. So that's over 500 pieces of M&Ms, all the kinds. So I'm going to pick out that M&M and I'm going to say, okay, what M&M, what kind are you? And I'm going to go, oh, you're a regular and you're red. Okay, so you go here. So that would be independence, one mixed up sample, and I sort them by two traits, type of M&M and color. But homogeneity, the way it was on page 14, was this, three separate samples of five, so I randomly selected 500 regular, randomly selected 500 peanut M&Ms, randomly selected 500 peanut butter, and then I sorted them by one categorical variable to see if that color is happening at the same rate amongst those three different types. All right. Whereas with an independence, we would say, is color distribution and type of M&Ms independent of each other? Are they associated? Are they related? Okay. Independent, association, related. Those tend to run together in the same type of things. Now, Here's the interesting one that for homogeneity and on our homework, Choco Zooties was experiment. So we had one sample of um, the children and then we randomly assigned them to a type of ad with the Choco Zooties. Well, or I think, I'm sorry, and, and then on page 14, we took one sample of women, we randomly assigned them to a treatment of which type of drink group to be in. So we had three different populations, random assignment to those three populations, and then we were seeing, the do those three drink populations get urinary tract infections at the same rate? That was homogeneous. But look here, see how this is different. One random sample of 750 women. So I just take 750 women and I ask them about a trait that they already have. Do what trait do you do? Do you, what? What? How would you best categorize yourself? A cranberry juice drinker, a lactobacillus drinker, or a neither control group? So you tell me two things about yourself, lady. <laughs> which category are you? Which type of drink do you drink? And what is your UTI? Do you have what rate have you gotten in the last um, however many however many uh, six months? I think it was. Okay. Yes or no? You have gotten it in the last six months. Categorical can't be how many because that number of them would be quantitative, and then it's not categorical. So I almost just caught myself. So I caught myself from a mistake there. Okay. So the difference was I took one sample of women and sorted them by two traits. I didn't 
randomly assign them to a population experiment treatment, experimental treatment. Okay, so the thing is, all of the assumptions and all of the calculator computing is identical to the homogeneity. So yay, we are not going over that. So we'll just you'll get more practice at the exact same thing. And so there you go. Now, we might want to talk about our null hypothesis statements and our alternative hypothesis statements, okay? So if this is an independent situation, then we're going to say this, this variable and this variable are independent of each other. We could, that would be the null hypothesis. We could also say there is no relationship between this variable and this variable. Nothing happening. No association. They are independent of each other, not affecting each other. Okay, that's the null hypothesis. The alternative is that there is something happening. So this variable and this variable are not independent of each other. There is a relationship. There is an association. Something is happening. So that would be the alternative. Okay, and then you're going to use your calculator results to see if you have evidence. The same type of thing with your homogeneity, but it's the same and different. That was same and different. Now, so let's review. We have here again our chi squared goodness of fit had one sample with one variable of claimed percentages. Okay, chi squared test of homogeneity two or more samples because they were taken from different populations. But testing them on that one categorical variable to see if they are doing something, doing that variables, things, categories at the same rate. Now here's this chi-squared test of independence. One sample that I will then take a look at you and see what your more than one categorical variable is. I'm going to take a look at your traits. Your, this, where you are in this variables status quo and where you are on the other variable status quo or more and I will place you according to the two variables that you in from that one sample have and then that's how I will run that chi-squared test of independence so let's now take a look at some situations and we're going to read them and we're going to see how do we do in terms of telling the difference between what these kinds of things are Identify which chi-squared test is appropriate. Chi-squared goodness of fit, chi-squared test of homogeneity, or chi-squared test of independence. Explain your choice. And you know what else? I threw in some one that are not chi-squared appropriate at all. So what would make it not chi-squared appropriate? And that would be not categorical. It's not proportion of values that are, or proportion of subjects that are in that category. If it asks for a quantitative amount, quantitative amount is out and not chi-squared. That's what you're looking for to be not appropriate for chi-squared. Okay, so here we go. Let's see what we got first. I'll take you through a couple of these, and then we'll, you'll pause and try some on your own. A restaurant manager wonders whether customers who dine on Friday nights have the same preference among the four chefs' special entrees as those who dine on Saturday and Sunday nights. One weekend, he has the wait staff take a random sample of 20 tables each night and records which entrees were ordered each night. Assuming these customers to be typical of all weekend diners, he'll then compare the distributions of meals chosen on the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So how is this organized? We want to ask ourselves number of samples, number of variables. How many samples? Is it one or is it different ones? I think it was three different samples. 20, a simple random sample of 20 tables on Friday and they're separate on Saturday and a, one's on Sunday. Okay. And then, um, okay, now, number of variables. What variables do we have? What are we going to, when we look at those um, subjects, what are we wondering about them? 
And I think we're just wondering one thing. What entree did they select? What type of entree? What type of chef or entree? So four categories. Okay. So which one is it? If it's three with one, and we're seeing if the distribution of entrees or chefs is the same on all the three of those nights, that's our chi-square test of homogeneity. All right, next. Company policy for parking spaces to be assigned to everyone at random. But you suspect that that may not be so. There are lots of equal size. Lot A, which is next to the building. Lot B, a little bit further away. And then lot C, on the other side of the highway. You randomly select 750 employees and you categorize each employee by their position upper management or not management, and then also determine which parking lot the employee was assigned. So let's think about what's happening. How is this organized? Number of samples. Number of samples. Looks like one sample of 750 people. Okay, one sample. Okay. So now, what information were you getting from those employees? I'm thinking you were getting two things, two sets of information. You were getting what is their position and then um, where, what lot were they assigned. So ultimately, two positions. So I'm wondering, is your position independent of the lot you get? Okay. So that's the chi-squared test of independence. All right. Let's try another one. Is a student's social life affected by where the student lives? A university surveys a random sample of students, whether they live in a dormitory, in off-campus housing, or at home, and whether they had been out on a date zero times, one to two times, three to four times, or five and more, or more times in the past two weeks. Okay. So let's, number of samples. What do we got? Um, let's see. A, ran, a survey asked a random sample of students. They asked a random sample of students whether they live in the dorm. Okay. So do you think this sounds like they're taking a random sample from dormitory, from off campus, and from at home, or it's just one sample? I think it's a random sample of students. So it's one sample. And from that, they're going to get two categorical variables information. They're going to get, okay, what is your living situation? Dormitory, off campus, or at home? And then what is your number of your category of dates situation? So here we go. Two categorical variables, your housing situation, or your date category. So let's see, what is that? One sample, two different variables. So I'm seeing is, are they independent? Are those two variables independent of each other? Social life and um, location where you live, independent of each other. Okay, let's try another one. One more, and then I'll let you do some on your own. Here we go. What if the problem, students in the previous problem were asked the number of dates they had gone on last month, not which of those categories, zero, one to two, three to four, five plus. What if I had just said, hey, how many dates? Then I would get what for each one of those uh, living situations? An average, and an average would not be categorical that would be quantitative. So that's a situation where I've turned something into not appropriate for chi-squared. All right, there are four more. I want you to pause right here and I want you to read those and you're gonna set, ask yourself how many samples and how many categorical variables, making sure they're categorical, and then let's check and see how you did. So pause right now and then we'll check when you get back. All right, 
Let's see how you did. This first one. Oh, this one was one sample. And we had some claimed percentages. Ooh, one category with given expected rate. I didn't have one of those for you. That was a chi-squared goodness of fit because that was claimed percentages like our claimed colors for our M&Ms. Okay, next we had, let's see. They had taken 100 residential students and 100 non-residential students. So they had two samples. Then they asked them one categorical variable, their course distribution. So that was two samples. Are they, is their course distribution the same? All right, chi-squared test of homogeneity. Next, let's see. This one was, ooh, brokerage firm is, let's see, we got types of accounts, silver, gold, or platinum. Okay. Among their customers, the company has a 45%. These, um, hmm. So they're telling me the percentage expected rates for the whole company. And then they're going to take a sample of the customers who make at least one in a month. So that's one sample. The accounts of customers who make at least one stock transaction in a month. Then they're going to check out that one categorical variable, the type of account. And they're going to check it against the expected rates, expected percentages, expected proportion of their company that's on those different, in those different categories. So that's a chi-squared goodness of fit because we were given those expected rates. Now, what happens if they did the average, then it's average size of the transaction. That is a quantity that would be um, qu uh, not categorical, so that's not appropriate for a chi-squared. All right, so I didn't have any problems here to go over with you to do the math because, and to go over with you, because it's the exact same as the chi-squared test of homogeneity. So you just need to practice that some more. Um, I think this assignment here, they are all the independent ones. I can't remember exactly, but I think that may be the case. Um, and then we get to where they are all mixed in together, okay? But I want, as you go through each one, I want you thinking, what kind of test is this indicating? And then go from there. All right, so good luck with you on this next assignment and that final new topic in Chi-Squared.